Alistair uh, was a member of the parliament here, I think, for nine years, and uh, he uh, left in 1993, which means he got voted out, and uh, he was probably in the Blue Mountains. It was very sad, I think we lost him, but certainly he's been actually, uh, uh, now he's actually was the president of the parliamentary uh, retired uh, uh, sort of fellowship they've got here, or uh, how would you call it, uh, group, association. Yeah. And, uh, but Alice is very interesting because he's also had uh, worked in the prison system. He was a superintendent of a prison, a youth prison, and he knows this issue of fatherlessness very, very well and the importance of uh, healthy masculinity. How do you, Alice? Yeah. With a build up like that, Warwick, I can hardly wait to hear what I've got to say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, I do want to pay uh, tribute to uh, Warwick and uh, Alison for the, uh, the inspiration they are and have been for so long in uh, really bringing these things together. Um, when I came into Parliament, there's a, I, heard, I heard a definition of Parliament that it was a place where somebody gets up to speak says nothing, nobody listens, and everybody disagrees. <laughs> uh, but it's so different here today, isn't it? Here we are, people getting up to speak, uh, everybody's listening, there's no disagreement, and uh, uh, we're going to have to see some good things come out of this. That's uh, a wonderful thing. And uh, I, uh, I give thanks every day for the fact that I did have a good father. Uh, and uh, I thank the Lord for the father I had. And uh, he was one of those fellows that uh, I never heard him swear in 53 years. Uh, in fact, he did when we were working on the car once. He, uh, <laughs> uh, he had a spanner on the cylinder head and it slipped off. And you know when you crack your knuckles? Uh, and he said, dash. <laughs> and he apologised to me for three weeks <laughs> for saying that. So just to give you an idea of, of the kind of father, I'm, I'm so thankful that uh, he prayed for me every day during those 53 years. Well, I uh, have 12 grandsons, uh, I have three sons, and two daughters, 12 grandsons and eight granddaughters. So you wonder how I've got time to be here today. Uh, but it's a great responsibility that we have personally in, in, our, in our own families. But I'm really uh, excited about the fact that I can say a couple of things about uh, Prison Fellowship today. Most of you know all about Prison Fellowship. You know that it was founded by Chuck Colson many years ago when he was in prison and saw the plight of prisoners, the loneliness of fathers and all those sorts of things. And so he started off Prison Fellowship, which is in so many countries around the world today doing so much good. Uh, just a couple of the things that are happening. Uh, and we know, of course, it has a wonderful uh, divine uh, imprimata in, uh, in Matthew 25 verse 36 where the Lord says I was in prison and he came unto me. Uh, a wonderful thing to, for us to bear in mind. So in prison you've got mostly men, uh, lots of women of course but mostly men and prison fellowship have a thing called angel tree and this is the sort of thing that everybody here can get involved in because it's undertaken by the local church. And Angel Tree is a, an organisation within Prison Fellowship that uh, allows congregations to buy presents for the children of men and women who are in prison. And uh, it's done on the basis that the, the prisoner gives uh, permission for that to uh, take place and the family is uh, approached as well. And every year, thousands of children receive a present from uh, the, the parent in prison uh, and uh, that has uh, been a wonderful blessing. The other thing we do is uh, have a, 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 a thing called Camp Works where the, the children of prisoners are also taken on holidays every year uh, at no expense of the family and transport and so on. So if you'd like to know more about uh, Prison Fellowship, uh, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me. Uh, afterwards, and uh, uh, it seems to be that the, the after the, the dog goes, the people get an opportunity to read, say a poem. And I just want to leave you one with uh, 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 this is this is called optimism, and uh, it really does have a good message. It's about two frogs. Some of you have probably heard about it, but these two frogs 
fell into a great big cream bowl and they couldn't get out. And uh, one of them was an optimistic soul. Uh, the other took a gloomy view. Will drown, he cried without more ado. So with one last despairing cry, he kicked up his legs and said goodbye. Now he's trying to swim around. We're going to drown, might as well drown now, and he did. Said the other frog with a merry grin, I can't get out, well I won't get in. I'll keep swimming around till my strength is spent. Then will I die the more content. Bravely he swam till it would seem his struggles began to turn the green. And on top of the butter at last he stopped. Now the bowl he gave him up. The moral of the poem is easy found. If you can't see a way out, you keep swimming around. <laughs>